Hello, this is Vipul Burohit and I once again welcome you to the another episode or another edition of Organometallic Compounds. In the previous parts, I have explained you the preparations of Organometallic Compounds. Three preparations are already done. Okay, and the very first edition of this Organometallic Compound series of lectures or series of videos involve the technical definition and the classification. All right. So the previous three preparations were the first one was that is oxidative addition reaction or we also call it as direct reaction of metals. The second one and that was the reaction taking place between a metal and metal. Okay, so it is metal metal exchange reaction or we call it as transmetallation. And then the third method was about carbonyl halide exchange reaction, which we also call it as metathesis reaction. All right. So my dear friends, in this video, we're going to the fourth method of preparation and that is going to be metal hydrogen exchange reaction or we also call this as a trans metallation reaction. Okay, what we call it as trans metallation reaction. Now, first of all, is I'll give you a general reaction, give you an explanation of that, and then I'll give you some of the specific examples. So here we go for the general reaction. The general reaction is let us take RH, an organic compound, and we treat this with R dash M. This is an organometallic compound. Now, as usual, I'm going to show you the bond formation and bond breaking so you guys can predict the products very fast. And that is, the bond is going to break between R dash M and, of course, RH. All right? And then there's going to be an exchange taking place. So now it's very obvious that H is going to go with R dash and the M is going to go with R. And as a result of which, you guessed it right, we are going to get two products and that is going to be Rm and plus R dash H. Okay, this is an organometallic compound. So, from one organometallic compound, we are going to prepare the another organometallic compound. Alright, so now, some basic explanation with respect to this reaction. Please try to understand that. And that is, in simple words, what I'll say is, that this is actually a nucleophilic attack. It is what? A nucleophilic attack of the hydrocarbon of the organometallic compound on the hydrogen of the organic compound. Okay? So, for this reaction to take place, the requirement is that this organic compound has to have a higher acidic character. You know what is an acidic character is all about? Yes. It's by the release of H plus ions. It's not a release of H. It's the release of H plus ions. Okay, so it should have a high acidic character. So that means it should have a capacity to release H plus ions very fast. And at the same time, the hydrocarbon moiety of the organometallic compound should have a high carbon ionic character. Alright? So what happens is this will be released fast, so this has got a greater acidic character, so it will be in the form of what? H plus ions. And this should have a higher carbon ionic character, so that means it will be R minus. So as a result of this, this two are going to be formed very fast to result in the formation of what? R dash H. And hence, we are left out with what we are preparing. And that is, you guys will try, it's the organometallic compound, and that is going to be what? R A. Alright, so this is what the basic part of this particular reaction is and that is it is going to be a nucleophilic attack of the hydrocarbon of the organometallic compound on the hydrogen of the organic compound. Alright, and for this purpose, okay, the organic compound that is RH should have a higher acidic character so it is going to release H plus ions very fast and at the same time the hydrocarbon of the organometallic compound must have a higher 
Yes, carbon ionic character. Okay, so that means this will be in the form of what? R dash minus. So both of them will combine very fast, resulting in R dash H, and we get the organometallic compound that is RN. All right? Right. Now we go into some of the specific examples so that you understand this very well, and that is. Let us start with cyclopentadiene. C5H6 is the formula. So what I'll do is, just for your understanding, I'll write down this way, okay? So C5H5H. And I'm going to treat this with CS3Li. So you understand this, what is going to happen? No? All right, I'll explain you how it is going to be. Okay, this one breaks. This results in the formation of a carbon ion. Okay, it should have a higher carbon ion in character. Okay, and then this should break very fast, should get a higher acidic character, all right? So both of them is going to combine this the way, all right? And as a result of which we are left out with what? The organometallic compound. You got it right? Yes. So what we have is the product form is going to be C5H5Li plus we get what? CH4, that is methane, all right? Uh, some more example and that is of course the this is uh, organometallic compound from which we are going to get another organometallic compound okay some more example c5h5h being treated with c2h5 say na all right so as a result of which what are we going to get the same way this h is going to go towards the carbon of uh, ethyl group which is going to be a carbon ion and as a result of which we are going to get C2H6 and we are left out with C5H5Na which is a organometallic compound. Alright, uh, next example we can give is say C6H5 thrice CH triphenylmethane. Okay, this is being treated with say C2H5Li. So same way once again and that is this H goes towards the negatively charged carbon of the ethyl group and we get C2H6 and we are going to get over here C6H5 thrice CLI okay and this is going to be a organometallic compound C6H5 thrice CLI right so this is the way the reaction takes place my dear friends as I said that for this reaction to take place, the carbon ionic character should be more. There are ways and means to increase the carbon ionic character by using some solvents. Okay, that is, for example, we have uh, DHF, that is uh, tetrahydrofuran. Okay, or we can also use, uh, say, uh, NNNN, that is tetramethylethylene diamine, that is TMED. I'll give you one example so that you understand this very well and that is let us take C6H5 thrice CH treated with C4H9Li this is N butyl lithium the reaction takes place in presence of N C6H14 that means it is hexane N hexane now the reaction is going to take place in presence of tetramethylethylene diamine TMED. So see how the reaction is going to take place is it is going to be the taking the reaction taking place is this H is going to go towards C4H9. So as a result of which I'm going to write down over here C4H10. So this is I'm going to get N butane. Okay, what I'm going to get is N butane. All right. Now what we have is, and that is C6H5 thrice C TM ED along with lithium. All right? Or we can also say that the reaction results in the formation of TM ED Li C C6H5 thrice C where lithium is directly bonded to carbon remember this though I have written it in this way but when you talk about the bonding part the lithium is directly bonded to this particular carbon and as a result of this this becomes an organometallic compound and this TMED that is tetramethylethylene diamine is responsible to increase the carbon ionic character okay of C4H9 alright and as a result of which this particular product is possible 
all right so i hope you have understood this fourth method of preparation of organometallic compounds in the form of metal hydrogen exchange reaction all right it is metal and hydrogen because as i said earlier high exchange takes place always amongst the similar species the hydrogen is going to be an acidic hydrogen so obviously it is going to be knocked out in the form of h plus and this is a carbon ion so that means this end is going to be positive so positive positive exchange taking place this reaction is also called as transmetallation i hope you got it right Yes, my dear friends, we have learned so far four methods of preparation. We go into the fifth and the last one, and that is called as methylene insertion reaction. Methylene insertion reactions, or we also call it as methylenation reaction. What we call it as methylenation reaction. All right. So in this case, what happens is a metal chloride, or it can be a non-metal chloride also, combining with diazomethane. It's combining with what? A diazomethane. So I just give you in short a metal or a non-metal chloride combining with diazomethane. Diazo means it is two nitrogen and methane. Now methane formula, you know, it is CH4. Now because two of the nitrogen has been introduced into that with the carbon still remaining as tetravalent so it's very obvious that will be the two hydrogen okay will be replaced and the two nitrogen goes in and as a result of which the formula of diisomethane should be CH2N2 so it is going to treat it with CH2N2 that is diisomethane in presence of a solvent such as ether resulting in the formation of an organometallic compound with the release of nitrogen gas all right so now how the reaction is going to be this is just a general reaction i now give you some specific reactions very simple they are and that is i'm going to take silicon tetrachloride SiCl4 all right or i write it down in a different form so that you understand this very well SiCl4 Four. This way I'll show. Okay. Now this is being treated with what? CH2N2. Okay. This is diisomethane. This is an organic carbon. Now the reaction takes place in presence of uh, ether as a solvent. So what happens in this case is, as usual, nitrogen. Okay. Carbon and nitrogen bonds are going to be broken down. All right. And it releases the free nitrogen gas. Now, what happens is any one of the bond between SI and the CL is going to break. Now, here what happens is that is two bonds are being broken. Okay, please try to understand that. Two bonds are being broken. You don't understand this? Okay, fine, no problems. I'll make you still more simpler, my dear friends. Come on, don't worry about it. Okay, well, how I'll show it is CH2N2. Okay, I'll show this way. Now, see what happens is. This one breaks, this one breaks. Okay, both of them are going to combine with each other, resulting in the formation of a nitrogen gas. So now what happens is carbon has to form two bonds. Okay, because the two bonds are being broken. So one of the bond is going to form with silicon, and the another bond is going to form with what? Chlorine. And silicon and chlorine bond breaks. And this is what my dear friends, we call it as what? Insertion reaction. All right, so who is getting inserted? The CH2 group because the two nitrogen are being knocked out. Then CH2 is called as a methylene group, and therefore we call this as methylene insertion reaction. So what we have now is the product. I guess you understood. Yes, and that is what we have. Si. Okay, the unchanged ones. I just write it down as it is. Okay, now what happens is Si. CH2 C here. This is what I get. Okay, and then of course I get nitrogen. Okay, so this is our organometallic compound where carbon is bonded to silicon whose electronegativity is going to be what less than that of carbon. So I consider this as a organometallic compound. Alright, so similarly I can also talk about GeCl4 plus CH2N2. I hope you understand this very well. 
Okay, the reaction takes place in presence of ether, or we can take a copper as a catalyst, and you get over here GE, there will be 3 Cl, Cl3, and there will be CH2, Cl, plus N2. Okay, so this CH2 is being bonded to germania, and germanium electronegativity is less than that of carbon, and as a result of which, this can be considered as an organometallic compound. Alright? Now please, my dear friends, uh, one important thing which you need to keep in mind, and that is, it's very difficult to insert the methylene group at all of the metal chlorine bonds. Now see here when I say metal or it can be a non-metal, but here when I'm using this word it is because that it has got a greater electronegativity as compared to that of chlorine. So with respect to that I'm using the word metal. Okay, I can take it as a non-metal also, okay, because silicon I cannot call it as a metal. But then it is with respect to the electronegativity I'm calling it as a metal. Okay, so please keep this in mind. Don't take a literal meaning in metal. Okay, so what happens over here is that it is difficult to insert okay the methylene in all the metal and the chlorine bonds okay there are four here here also there are four so it's going to be very difficult to break those bonds and then insert that okay so therefore many times a derivatives are being formed okay so this is what you need to keep in mind and this is my dear friends about methylenation reaction or methylene insertion reaction and with this my dear friends we finish off with all the five methods of preparation of organometallic compounds way back from the first one was an oxidative addition method or we also call it as a direct reaction of metals. The second one was about the metal-metal exchange reaction or we call it as transmetallation. The third one was carbon ion halide exchange reaction which we also call it as metathesis. Okay, the fourth one was metal hydrogen exchange reaction, which we call it as transmetallation. And the fifth and the last one, which is there in front of you, my dear friends, and that is about methylene insertion reaction, or we call it as methylenation reaction. I hope you have understood all the five preparation methods of organometallic compounds. Thank you so much.